So before Finding Dory started, there was a short animated film called Piper. So I'm going to give you my quick review for Piper. Piper is a short animated film about this bird that comes out of the nest for the first time. But this bird is having a hard time having to find food out on the beach with all the other bigger birds. And along the way, the bird meets his little crab. They become friends. And, you know, the bird just learns the way of having to get used to certain things since this bird is like new to the world just looking at this bird wow all the other birds are great too but when you just see this baby bird it's just so cute my goodness the animation looks freaking amazing like so much detail goes into the animation for Piper it just looks so realistic if someone told me they actually use an actual HD camera to film this movie I would actually believe them I would actually believe it as a live action thing rather than an animation thing because that's how gorgeous this short looks the storyline is great I love the writing for this short it's just very beautiful to watch it just screams aww because it's just so adorable I honestly really loved this short so I'm gonna give Piper an A minus so now that I've given you my quick thoughts on Piper let me go ahead and review Finding Dory the sea somewhere waiting for me hey there everybody this is 22 tiger dude here and i am here to review finding dory so finding dory is the sequel to the 2003 film Finding Nemo. And this time around with Finding Dory, Dory has flashbacks of her parents, but she doesn't exactly know where her parents are. So when Dory wants to go out find her own parents, she goes on an adventure. But of course, just like with what happened to Nemo in the original film, she does get taken away. So it's up to Marlin and Nemo to go find Dory. She bumps into this octopus named Hank. So along the way, she does get help from this octopus to go find Dory's parents. And honestly, you guys, I was really looking forward to finding Dory. This is my second most anticipated movie of 2016. I just couldn't wait for this film. Uh, just definitely a film I was very anticipated for because I truly did love 2003's Finding Nemo. I consider that one of Pixar's greatest films, one of the best animated films in general. I love Finding Nemo to death. When it comes to Finding Dory, I wasn't expecting it to reach the same level as the 2003 film because in my opinion that's asking for a little too much. I just wanted it to be at least a good sequel. And I gotta say, coming out of Finding Dory guys, <sighs> I'm not gonna lie guys, I came out of Finding Dory very, very happy. I had so much joy watching Finding Dory guys. I really had such a very good time watching this film. So let's go ahead and start off with the animation because just like with any Pixar movie, the animation is beautiful. There's just so much detail into the animation. It looks just as beautiful. It captures just the beauty of the ocean and even out of the ocean like with the 2003 film. Wow, the animation is just so beautiful, so colorful, so vibrant, and it just shows why Pixar is truly tremendous when it comes to their animation because wow. Ellen DeGeneres as Dory, she does a really great job. It's so awesome to hear Ellen DeGeneres. And the one thing Pixar has always been great at is casting someone to do a voice character. Like even though they use their same exact voice for that character, 
when you hear that character, you don't see that person in a studio voicing it. You actually see that character, and that is no exception with Finding Dory. Ellen DeGeneres, yes, even if it's Ellen DeGeneres using her voice, I don't see Ellen DeGeneres voicing in a studio. I actually see Dory, and she does a really great job. And I loved Dory here. She truly does work for the main character because, you know, in the original, she was a side character where she did have a lot of comic relief, which was what made the first film so great. But what I loved about this film this time around is, even though, yes, she does have her comedic Dory moments, there is more depth to this character this time around. Like, she does get more personal in this film, definitely. And that was actually a very nice change, whereas we're used to seeing Dory, like, happy all the time, pretty much all the time, I would say, at Finding Nemo. This time around, she has her blend of being happy, but also her moments of being sad and because of how much she wants to find her parents you know she just has her moments of you know being sad she tries to find her parents by having flashbacks throughout the movie which I thought was a very brilliant way of telling her story and it just makes the adventure just so great when you follow Dory and of course you know I might get to Ed O'Neill later on, but the adventure she has with Hank the Octopus, I thought the movie handled their dynamic very well. Albert Brooks is back as Marlin, and it's so great to hear him as Marlin again because, man, Albert Brooks, like with Ellen, he uses his regular voice. He just fits that character, like, so freaking perfectly and it's cool to see that Marlin still has that worried personality like in the original film he's always worried about Nemo now this time around he's always worried about Nemo or some of the situations that him and Nemo get into throughout the film and Nemo is voiced by of course a different actor because of course the voice actor that voiced Nemo in the first film is grown up by now so I have to give credit to the new kid I forgot the name but I thought the new kid that voiced Nemo did a great job and I thought the side plot with Marlin and Nemo who are the supporting characters this time around I thought they actually worked very well for supporting characters now as I said earlier we do get introduced to Hank the Octopus that tags along with Dory in this film and I have to say Ed O'Neill who you might be familiar with from Married with Children or Modern Family he did a great job voicing Hank Ed O'Neill really was born to voice Hank I thought he really carried the personality of Hank very well and then of course you got the whales you have Ty Burrell that voices Bailey and then you have Caitlin Olsen that voices Destiny I thought these two did a great job with their roles they were both very funny <laughs> they were both very entertaining especially when I see Bailey for the first time I couldn't stop laughing honestly there were definitely some moments in Fine Dory where I just couldn't stop laughing but Destiny is the well I guess you could say got Dory to speaking well because you know Dory was speaking well in the first film and she said how she had a well friend and well in this film apparently Apparently we now have met that well friend which I thought was interesting. Idris Elba and Dominic West both kill it as the sea lions. I freaking love the sea lions. Just such memorable and entertaining characters and Idris Elba, my goodness, this man is killing it with animated movies. With him voicing Chief Bogo in Zootopia, Shere Khan in The Jungle Book, and now um, I believe it's Fluke the sea lion here in this film. Idris Elba just... Seriously man, just great job. And then of course the casting choices of Eugene Levy and Diane Keaton as Dory's parents was seriously great. And even got Bill Hader to do a small voice role in this film which I also really enjoy. And of course you do see some of the characters back from the original like you do see Crush again for a good minute which was really cool. You see Mr. Ray again so it was even cool to see some characters back from the original film here. What I also have to give huge praise to Finding Dory for doing is actually having a very important message about disabilities. Dory has a short-term memory loss and you could tell that Dory is really having a difficult time. I thought it made the message seem meaningful. So I really liked how we had to see 
story trying to go on this adventure while still dealing with this disability but it's like she can't help it because she was born with that and you could tell that there's times where Dory is actually really frustrated having that disability so it felt like a very personal journey for Dory not only for her to find her parents but for her to find her parents but with her dealing with such a difficult disability. Andrew Stanton does such a great job directing this film. With him directing Finding Nemo, he's the guy that I think should return if there was ever going to be a Finding Nemo sequel. And it's definitely a really great thing because Andrew Stanton is definitely one of the best directors working for Pixar. The writing for the film with him as well as other writers, I thought they did a really good job writing the story for Dory and Marlin and Nemo and then for us to get these segments with these side characters but also creating for a blend of nice heartwarming moments and nice comedic moments. There's a good blend of heart and comedy in Finding Dory. When the movie goes for comedy for the most part it absolutely hits for me and then when the movie does get serious it's honestly very well done is how the movie opens with baby Dory and her parents. Then we see Dory grow up from like a teenager to her being a, her grown self to her meeting Marlin from the original Finding Nemo. Then from there it cuts one year later. That was a great way to open Finding Dory and I really loved that. But there's also other genuine moments in this film that were great. Not spoiling anything but once Dory does actually find her parents, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I almost cried during that scene. I love the score in this film as well, like it does keep some of the music that you hear from Finding Nemo, maybe change it around this time around, but it's still basically the same. But it does have other kinds of different music that I actually really liked. Although I will be honest, I did miss hearing Beyond the Sea because they don't play the song Beyond the Sea in this film, unfortunately. But the new song that we do hear in the end credits of Finding Dory, that was still a very very nice song though. There's incredible pacing of Finding Dory as well as I honestly was never bored watching Finding Dory. It is a very fast paced movie. Not like where it's very rushed or anything like that. Like it has a natural fast pace in my opinion. The movie keeps going and going and even when the movie does slow down, it slows down to build these very heartwarming and emotional moments for you to feel for Dory. So when the movie does slow down, it feels natural, it feels necessary, and I find myself just highly engrossed during those moments. And something I have to give Finding Dory credit for is just the overall adventure because the movie, really the adventure is set in only one location, which is the Marine Institute, whereas Finding Nemo, the adventure is so much more grand. But Finding Dory went a little bit more simpler this time around. Just because you have a sequel, bigger doesn't always have to mean better. And this time around, Finding Dory went a little more simpler with the adventure. But there's still enough of the adventure for me to just really, really enjoy. And I have to say, I actually really like the final act of Finding Dory. I know there's criticism saying that it gets way, way too realistic. You have to suspend your disbelief. Um, honestly, would you have to suspend your disbelief? Yeah, sure. But honestly, for me, that wasn't really hard to do. I actually really enjoyed how a little over the top the third act goes. Well, I would say, honestly, it does get really over the top, but it actually didn't take away my enjoyment of the film. I was actually really, really enjoying the third act of the movie. It, it just created for some of the most funniest moments, honestly, and Finding Dory, and I just thought the third act was honestly very entertaining, how it went for more of that action-packed vibe. Like, it does kind of come out of nowhere, but I think, in my opinion, it actually worked that the movie went in that direction for the climax. I actually had a blast with the climax. But then again, this is coming from the guy that actually liked Cars 2. And that movie definitely had ridiculous moments, so yeah. 
Now, as for flaws with Finding Dory, and granted, I don't think my flaws are really huge. They're really small gripes, if I have to be honest. Really, my only flaws with Finding Dory is just that I don't think the movie's as emotional as Finding Nemo. Even though I still was highly engaged with the heartwarming scenes, the more serious scenes in Finding Dory, I do feel like there could have been a little more of that emotional punch, because I will say this, there's a few times where I was getting choked up, like, I was getting choked up in a few scenes and like there was a point where I could feel myself almost getting that slight bit of tear out but it wasn't like Finding Nemo where I was honestly crying. The movie honestly I was never bored, I was always highly invested but it does get a little bit too fast paced, it gets a little bit too fast paced in the beginning and a few scenes in the middle section and a little bit in the third act. I did think it was a little too fast paced there. Also, I know some of the criticisms people are having with this film is that some moments do feel a little too familiar with Finding Nemo, which I can understand. Um, personally, I only have one scene that I did feel like was honestly way too familiar with Finding Nemo and that was when Dory gets taken. However, Marlon does make a line saying, not again. So I actually did think that was funny, but yeah, that moment, a little too familiar from Finding Nemo in my opinion. And really my final small flaw with Finding Dory is that how Dory does find her parents, no spoilers, it does feel a little too convenient overall, you guys. Finding Dory is fantastic. I love this movie. This is, hands down, one of the best movies of 2016. Pixar, wow. Just wow. They hit it out of the park with this film. And this film just brought me so much joy. Now, of course, the question everyone's going to ask is, is as good as Finding Nemo? No, I don't think so. It's pretty darn close, however, I will say that. But I still love Finding Dory because it just stood on its own. Uh, surprisingly, for this being a sequel, it didn't really rely too much with the first, like having to connect with the first. There are definitely things that they mention from the first or connect with the first, but I say really for the most part, the film really stands on its own. This is definitely one of the best films of 2016 and I'm going to give Finding Dory three and a half out of four stars. Also, don't forget to stay until the end credits because there is an end credits scene here in Finding Dory and it is awesome and that definitely brought so much joy to me. So you guys, just like with my movie review for Central Intelligence, I did ask you on my Facebook and Twitter to guess my rating for Finding Dory and if you guessed it right, you're going to get a shout out here in this movie review. So the people that got my rating right on Facebook are Adam Haskell, Zoe Bromage, and G. Colby Porter. Adam does have a channel, so if you guys want to check it out, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. And for Twitter, the shoutouts go to, once again, Adam Haskell. He guessed it on Twitter as well. Nate Plouf, aka Stupid Beagle Reviews. Great channel, great guy. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description down below. Thomas Bladlock and Cow. And if you guys don't follow me on Facebook and Twitter, I'll leave a link to those as well. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, 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 swimming.